So I've heard a few programs, uh, ER programs out there, if you had TEP in the, in the ER to monitor stuff in the code. <laughs> and I was at, I'm on cars right now, and TEP doesn't seem terribly difficult. We did one the other day with no sedation, no analgesia, just, you know, the patient was relaxed enough to just take it. And <laughs> That's a really unique patient. Wow. <laughs> so CT surgery then? So what's your question? So the question is, can we... Do you think that's within our scope, and should we learn how to do that? Is that something we can look forward to in the future, doing TE and the ER to rule out? So I, I know I know that Rich is going to talk about this a lot. So to restate the question, is there a role for TEE in the emergency department during critically ill patients? Yeah, especially during like codes and things like that. It seems like a lot of people do. So the so ultra, you know, I mean, that is the cutting edge of ultrasound in the emergency department. Is TEE. Yes, there are departments out there doing it. There is case series supporting the notion that there is a benefit from doing it. Is it something that I think we can do? Yeah. Sure, we uh, place NG tubes all the time blindly. I don't see why we can't slip a ultrasound probe down there as well. Uh, the big fear is that you're going to uh, create a bore hog, right? Uh, the incidence of that is like less than 0.2%. Um, so it's a very uncommon thing. Where do I think that it can be used? I think it can be used in the peri arrest situation. Uh, I think that it can be used during arrest to monitor quality of CPR. Uh, think in your mind for a second with the um, Lucas devices. Uh, you guys, if you're, if you're looking carefully, a lot of times that, that, that device will slip off the heart, yeah. right? So if somebody's not paying attention and you're doing CPR that's not directed over the heart, uh, sometimes the heart isn't exactly in the position that you imagine it to be. Those of you that are getting good at echo, maybe that COPD patient, that heart's actually sitting down here. <clears throat> How do you think the quality of CPR is on that, on that case if you're doing it up here, right? So... I think that it, there is a potential uh, application with monitoring the quality of CPR, make sure that the compressions are actually being directed over the heart. Um, uh, you know, you have 10 seconds roughly to try to get a get an image of the heart with transthoracic echo in between compressions, right? Because your coronary perfusion pressure goes down precipitously when you hold CPR, whereas with TEE it just stays in all the time, so you can get a good look at the heart. Um, in between compressions and during compression. So uh, I think you'll get a good look at cardiac performance when you add inotropes or inopressors. I think you're gonna have more to the second information on the response uh, of the patient to your resuscitation. So I think there is application and I think that we'll be doing it one day, maybe not in every center in the United States, but big centers, I think, yeah, we will be doing that one day. The, the thing that we need to work around is the cost. The probe is extremely expensive. All right, so uh, they're starting to come out with some cheaper probes, some disposable probes, uh, and I think that's where we'll uh, start to start to use it. So I think it's coming down the pipe, probably not uh, in the foreseeable future here. And I agree with Rich. I, th I think this is the future. The ten years from now, they're going to be like, "How did you guys do codes without a TE probe?" You know, it. it I think that it, it's going to happen, but the cost has to come way down for it to even penetrate uh, academic centers, much less private places. The images are actually beautiful, um, so it's not a problem of can we interpret the images. It's a problem of is this a cost-effective thing? Because I think the main danger of it is are you doing something by focusing on these beautiful images and passing the the the, the probe and so forth, as opposed to doing really good, high-quality chest compressions and whatnot. So much the same way, you, I'm sure you guys have been part of codes where someone stops compressions for like 45 seconds while everyone tries to get the perfect view of the, of the heart doing transthoracic echo, and that's really terrible care. You just can't do that. Um, I think that this has a lower likelihood of that, especially in an intubated patient, um, than doing that and, and fixes that problem, but you can't let that distract you. So in a private setting where you have a single intending and that's it, I think it's largely impractical because someone's got to run the code. That may be the nursing staff running the code while you're doing this. But if you're by yourself and you're the one that's intubating and you're the one running the code and you're the one that's you know trying to do this ultrasound, like that's a lot for one person to try to do. So it has danger unless you've got more than one person helping. 